It's 2008 and Jagex staff have been hard at work on what's likely to be the biggest update of the year. They had been teasing it for over half a decade and it was finally ready. The summoning skill. An update where you can summon monsters and animals to help you complete various different tasks or fight alongside you. The community is excited, especially after how horribly the end of 2007 turned out. The update is finally finished, but at the last second, a skill breaking bug is noticed. It makes a huge chunk of the update completely broken. The update should get delayed, right? Well, it didn't, and the mess that it caused might surprise you. For this story, we have to start from the beginning, all the way back in the early 2000s. Summoning wasn't just some update that over the course of a few months was thought of, made, and released. It was something that had been teased since RuneScape Classic. Players managed to decompile Classic's cache and discover a ton of unreleased content. One of these was the Life Rune, a rune intended to be the opposite of a death rune. Rather than inflicting death through powerful combat spells, it would be used to bring the dead back to life. Unfortunately, due to just how limited RuneScape Classic's engine was, it was never released. But it got players thinking about just how amazing the ability to summon their own creatures would be. Just two days after RuneScape 2's release in March of 2004, summoning would return yet again. Andrew Gower published an article to RuneScape's website discussing all of the updates he would like to implement in the near future, some of which did end up releasing, like the quest journal and board games. Others like like the Lizardmen and Orc races were scrapped almost entirely. No, the Lizardmen and Old School don't count. These are the real Lizardmen. Two updates that really caught players' eyes were the addition of more pets and followers with different properties and abilities, along with summoning spells, which would let you summon skeletons and demons. In January of 2005, Maud Bennett began actually working on a big design document for summoning. He was the developer who created the Slayer skill, so expectations were really high. Unfortunately, it didn't fit the game's current direction, and the team decided that it wouldn't have brought enough appeal, so it was scrapped for the time being. Jagex revisited summoning a few months later with Maud Wilson in charge of coming up with a design document. This time, the skill had a strange name change. Animal Lore. It was essentially Pokemon. You'd catch animals and train them, and in return they'd carry items or fight for you. In order to gain XP, you would need to have your follower out with you at all times. In the long run, this didn't work because the game engine couldn't handle every RuneScape player having a pet with them at all times. Modmark also said the team didn't want to turn the game into Petscape, which, well, kinda just ended up happening a few years later anyway. But the engine limitation stuff makes sense. It was still 2005 and NPCs couldn't even walk diagonally until 2007. Speaking of 2007, February of that year might have been Jagex's biggest tease when it came to summoning. The Tower of Life quest was added to the game along with the creature creation activity. Players were certain that this was the summoning update that had been teased for over half a decade and they were kind of disappointed. This big amazing creature summoning update turned into combining a chicken and a fish in a basement. Mod Ash actually had to make a post on the RuneScape forum saying that this was not summoning, but was a test to see how the servers would actually handle it. The player base finally knew summoning was actually a reality. Behind the scenes, Mod Wilson had been hard at work creating the entire skill essentially by himself during the majority of 2007. His only help was the graphics team, who obviously created all the graphics, and the web team, who wrote some NPC dialogue. Before passing it off to the web team, Maud Wilson had written complete dialogue for 50 summoning-related NPCs. Wilson was just about finished with the skill, and that's when the problems started to pop up. First of all, it was decided that summoning would be split into two batches. The skill itself was absolutely massive, even when split in two. Jagex's reasoning was that the update would be too large and overwhelming if released all at once, and Batch 1 seemed to be able to stand on its own. Even so, behind the scenes, both batches were being tested at the same time by different quality assurance teams. But for some reason, both teams were put together in the same development server, and they couldn't decide which version should be put on it. Wilson started by putting in the Batch 1 version. Team 2 comes to him and says, you're obstructing the testing of Batch 2 because all of the Batch 2 features are missing from the in-game skill menu. So Wilson spends over a day adding them. Then, Batch 1's team says, hey, what's all this junk on the skill menu? We have to sign off saying that's not there or else it won't pass our test. So Wilson spends another day removing them. In the end, Mod Wilson had been reported by both teams for being obstructive. As strange as these two teams sound, they did manage to catch quite a few bugs. Now, I mentioned previously that the game engine would have issues with everyone having pets out at the same time. Summoning was supposed to stop this by limiting the amount of time each creature would, I guess, exist, as brutal as that sounds 
rounds. Anyway, familiars would basically be summoned for a set amount of time before they expired. That actually just sounds even worse. Basically, summoning familiars would not be out at all times, so it shouldn't slow down the game engine that bad. Until during testing, someone managed to summon multiple at a time and have an army of 30 familiars following him killing stuff. While all this was going on, Mod Wilson and Mod Jenny were also working on balancing the combat aspects of summoning, what numbers monsters would hit, how accurate they were, and so on. Wilson wrote the combat code numbers with his best guess on what they should be. He would pitch them to Mod Jenny, who would in turn do some calculations and correctly balance them. This process went on for months and took hundreds of tests. When this was finally completed, the entire skill was handed off to be code reviewed. Mod Ash was one of the mods reviewing the code, which is when he noticed a tiny little bug in the combat code. The bug made all of the balancing completely useless. It had made everything 50-50. For example, your familiar would hit an enemy 50% of the time, and 50% of the time it wouldn't. Or another monster would hit your familiar 50% of the time, or it wouldn't. Now this might sound bad, but just remove the bug and all the numbers that Jenny had calculated would work, right? Well, not exactly. This bug was present in all of the tests Jenny did without her or Wilson ever realizing it. So the months of data she had been collecting were completely useless. They had balanced summoning around this bug. So Mod Ash goes to management and says, this is really bad the entire skill is broken management says it's too late we're launching it anyway it was deemed more important to launch anyway so we did i swear it's true they were under massive pressure to launch something because the updates from the end of 2007 restricting free trade and making the wilderness safe were causing the game to just absolutely bleed players. So rather than delaying the update, Jagex chose to launch content that was catastrophically broken. It's hard to gauge what player responses were like back then simply because this update is over 13 years old, but it seemed as if the majority of them were underwhelmed. Familiars didn't last long, were not very useful or rewarding, and the previously mentioned combat familiars didn't hit very hard and died very quickly. Not to mention, many of these familiars changed how you played the game entirely and affected the game's economy quite a bit. Most people had no incentive to train summoning, especially with how expensive and time-consuming it was to do so. As a result, the majority of the next three months were spent significantly rebalancing summoning. Mod Ash referred to it as being like a game of telephone. Andrew Gower would talk to the head of content, who would talk to Mod Mark, who would create meetings with developers. Then the information gained from those meetings would be reported back up the chain. This could have all been avoided had Mod Wilson just been given a little bit more time. Eventually, everything ended up getting patched along with adding the second batch of summoning with an update called Summoning 2. In the end, the players seemed satisfied with summoning, but the release of Batch 1 had left a bad taste in their mouths for years to come. Summoning was released when RuneScape really needed a Grand Slam update to keep players from leaving, but it just didn't deliver. I think this is why a lot of old school players hate the idea of summoning entering the game, along with just how much it would change the economy and how you play. I've mentioned all throughout this video just how bad 2007 actually was for RuneScape. It brought some of the worst updates ever seen and managed to make one item RuneScape's new currency for a while. Oddly enough, it was a piece of cake. If you'd like to see just how insane of a year that was, check out the video I've linked on screen right now.